My name is Anthony Huron. I have been a professional photographer for over 20 years. In 2018, I decided to begin fulfilling my childhood dream of being a wildlife photographer by dedicating some of my free time to capturing some of the wonders of nature around me. Over the last four seasons, I've been using the Fuji X-H2S and the X-H2, plus the 150 to 600 millimeter lens and my trusted 200 millimeter F2. So grab a hot drink, relax, and enjoy some of the best moments with me. I will share a few thoughts about the camera gear at the end. The 150 to 600 millimeter really shines at capturing small birds and large insects at a comfortable working distance. Travelling north now to the beautiful west coast of Scotland with its clear sparkling seas and white sands. A sleepy gannet begins to awake. really enjoying the benefits of the slow motion 4K 120p video from the Fuji X-H2S.
Back home in West Sussex, I had a lovely experience watching these willow warblers feeding on small insects. I was very thankful for the reach the 150 to 600 mm Fuji lens gives in these situations. I was soon to have another lovely surprise, something I'd never photographed before. The hummingbird hawk moth. There's plenty of other insects around also. It's time to head out into the South Downs to see what we can find. With the arrival of autumn, I am rewarded with a very special encounter. Badgers. 
feasting on fallen acorns and fattening up for the winter. The rich autumn colours and gorgeous light are displayed beautifully by my favourite Fuji colour profile, Astia Soft.
winter begins to take its hold and a deep frost covers the landscape. The cold weather draws out from the woods a nocturnal bird I've always wanted to photograph. The tawny owl. Time to take one of my favourite walks near the Arundel Valley. With the ability to capture up to 40 frames per second with the Fuji X-H2S, it opens up more possibilities when photographing birds in flight. It's been wonderful to see the majestic white-tailed eagle establishing itself down here in southern England.
whilst taking a few days break to see family in North Yorkshire. I am treated to another lovely experience. The Barn Owl Spring has arrived, and these San Martins are already busy tending to their young. This great crested grebe has eyes bigger than its stomach. A carpet of blue welcomes the sunrise. Bluebell season is in full swing. Time for some of my wife's homemade apple cake. Wait.
as spring transitions into summer, there is an abundance of new life. But with new life means many more mouths to feed. This fox is on the hunt. The unforgettable sound of summer. The skylark song never fails to bring warmth to my soul.
The harvest field provides a home and great cover for many creatures. I am very thankful to God for every creature that I have been privileged to see over these last four seasons. I see the works of his hands and intricate wisdom displayed in all of them and through all of them. From the birds of the air, to the beasts of the field, and the creatures of the roaring seas, his beauty, majesty and power is reflected in all that he has made, from the delicate and small to the majestic and mighty. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. There was one creature that had eluded me for the whole of the four seasons, right until the end. The jewel of the British Isles, the Kingfisher. Well hello, I hope you enjoyed my nature film. As promised, I'm going to give a few thoughts about the camera gear I've used over the last four seasons. So this review is not an in-depth technical review on how all the functions work on the camera. There's so much online you can look at for that. Um, it's more to do with my thoughts on this camera gear for wildlife photography. Some of the things that have a uh, great benefit for wildlife photography and uh, things I liked about the camera. Things that Fuji could improve on a little bit as well. Um, I hope you enjoy it. So I found the ergonomics of this camera superb. I love the grip. It's a really good fitting grip for my hands. Uh, so much so that I no longer actually attach a battery grip. I used to on my X-T4 uh, attach a battery grip, but there's so much purchase on this grip. It's just right for my hands anyway, um, that I've taken the battery grip off and save weight. So I carry batteries in my pocket or my backpack. And combined with this lens, it's a really lightweight package 
that's superb for walking around and looking for wildlife and nature. It really isn't that heavy for the quality it has and the reach it has. So the combined weight of this lens and this camera body is about 2.265 kilograms, just under five pounds. So a really nice, lightweight, powerful tool. So this 150 to 600 millimeter lens is about the equivalent of 225 to about 900 just over millimeter uh, on a full frame. So you're getting a lot of reach for a lightweight package. One of the features that I really like about the new body design for the Fuji X-H2 and X-H2S uh, is the fact that actually they've changed the manual focus button to a push button rather than a switch button. Now I love retro dials, but practically speaking for wildlife photography and maybe sport, or for those who are gonna use manual focus, um, it's much easier to reassign the right button here. Um, so I can actually have the camera up to my eye. I can change by pushing this button on the right here uh, to manual focus quite easily. So I don't have to try and let go of this hand. And I can't let go of this hand because it's supporting my lens. You should never let the, uh, the weight of the lens uh, put pressure on the lens mount. So I always got to keep this hand here uh, when doing wildlife photography. So I can quickly change to manual focus when I switch into video or stills really easily, which I love about this new camera body design. One of the features I really like about this camera body, uh, the button layout, particularly for wildlife photography and working at speed, is having the seven custom functions. For C1, I'll set for birds in flight, so I'll have a high shutter speed set um, and I'll have bird eye detect set on that. For C2, I'll have animal eye detect on there uh, and a slightly slower shutter speed for mammals that aren't really moving as quick. Uh, it just means I can quickly change from C1 to C2 if I see an animal, a bird or a mammal, I can quickly uh, respond uh, with the default camera settings in place. C3 and C4 I use for my wedding settings, so probably not applicable here, but C5 I use uh, for 25p video, uh, C6 I use for 60p video, these are all 4K, and C7 I use for 120p uh, 4K slow motion video, which I use quite a lot for wildlife, which has been really beneficial. One of the changes I'd like Fujifilm to make for us is to enable us to access the seven custom function buttons using any of the other custom function buttons other than the dial because again, I need to be able to change custom function modes whilst the camera is up to my eye holding a big lens. Um, I can't do that again with the big lens because my left hand is supporting the lens. Um, one of the things I thought they could do is actually change this filter mode to another custom function uh, button. That'd be really helpful. I don't think anybody really uses that for anything anyway. The cameras also have a quick record button to the right of the trigger button which I would use more if Fuji allowed us to override the default settings because you can only use, as far as I can see, automatic ISO and automatic focus. Um, I'd love to be able to take over that settings completely manually. Uh, that would become much more useful. Easily done on a firmware upgrade. I really like the way that uh, Fuji have designed where the eyelets go for the camera strap. Uh, it fits really well for peak design toggles. Um, it's very really neat and uh, much more secure and it doesn't have a dangling bit attached to it, so it's not going to rattle around during video recording, it doesn't get in the way of your hand. Um, so I really like the fact that they've changed the design of the eyelets for the camera straps. In terms of comparing this body design to the more traditional Fuji um, layout, um, I do love the analog controls and the dials on the X-T4 and X-T5, but when working at speed and for wildlife, I think for me, accessing the focus button uh, on the right here and also having the custom function uh, options, seven custom functional options, and a meteor grip. Um, I found for wildlife um, much better working at speed. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I could quite easily use X-T5 as well, um, but this really helps when you've got a bigger, longer lens uh, on the camera to have more of a purchase on the grip. In terms of the screen, having a, a flippy screen, uh, obviously video makers are gonna probably prefer that. Uh, stills photographers may prefer just the tilting screen. Uh, but for what I do, a lot of hybrid shooting, uh, and the fact that I can just close this uh, screen away and not have any screen, especially when holding this camera up to my face a lot, using the EVF and not getting my greasy nose on the screen, and it's more protected that way. I generally think prefer uh, the flippy screen. Um, I understand though for stills photographers, they might like just the tilty uh, screen, um, but that's personal preference. Of course, one of the main benefits of the Fuji X-H2S is the stacked sensor, which enables the camera to read out very quickly, uh, giving a maximum frame rate of 40 frames per second, which is hugely beneficial for when photographing birds in action, like birds in flight. Uh, that's been a, a really powerful tool. 
and also having 120p 4K video slow motion, which has been brilliant. Another benefit of having a stack sensor is just the camera operating at a faster speed uh, when tracking animals. Um, I found that the X-H2S is definitely a bit more confident uh, when photographing animals moving at high speed. One of the great benefits of having a stack sensor is the lack of rolling shutter, which is that um, wobble effect you can get using electronic shutter and when using video. It's pretty much eliminated on stills. I haven't seen any uh, rolling shutter effect at all. And on video, I haven't seen it either. So there will be some there, but it's very minimal. Um, so that's a huge benefit of the X-H2S. One of the benefits of the X-H2 is obviously the higher resolution, um, having the ability to shoot 8K video and cropping in for edits, which I'll be doing on this camera, shooting me right now, um, and also higher resolution stills if you're cropping a lot into wildlife pictures. Hence why I have one of each. So if I'm working um, from a hide uh, and I'm working on a perch for a bird, I'll tend to use the X-H2, uh, which you'll see from the Kingfisher shots I did. It enables me to get a very high resolution picture and to crop in a bit more. The X-H2 can track birds in flight as well, but obviously you're going to get less frames per second. Uh, and also I found it not quite as confident uh, finding focus as the X-H2S. But the S is designed for speed and the X-H2 is designed for more resolution. So having one of each is really beneficial for me. I have to have two cameras for my job anyway, so I thought I'd go for one of each to get the best of both. For wildlife photography, it's been great to have the animal eye detect uh, and the bird detect. Uh, I've been using this. I found it very effective in many situations. It's great for birds uh, that are just on branches and perched and uh, moving around. For birds in flight, it's uh, good, but sometimes it can lose uh, a subject if there's a very distracting background quite close behind the bird. Um, if there's plain sky or more distance behind the bird, then it seems to be quite confident. Um, but I'm sure that will improve with firmware upgrades as Fuji uh, changes the algorithms and enable it to become even more accurate. The animal eye detector has been really good. I've been using it on uh, deer in these woods behind me. And it's been working really well. Um, it's really great to be able to just concentrate on composing your image and allowing the camera to focus on the eye of the animal. Um, well done Fuji for bringing this technology in. Also, I hope Fuji will incorporate the auto subject detect where the camera decides whether it's a human, bird or animal, for example, and it would quickly change settings itself. That would take one more thing out of the equation when you're trying to photograph animals. Uh, one last thing to think about, and that would be a, a really helpful tool to have uh, in the future, hopefully Fuji. I have been using the animal and bird eye detect in video mode sometimes as well, which has been great in certain situations, but other times it can occasionally lose it and pulse a little bit and spoil the video clip. I often shoot video manual mode anyway, to be honest. I'm sure Fuji will improve the performance of this camera even more with firmware upgrades. They've already given us quite a few, and I'm very thankful that they've allowed us to use now the front dial uh, to change either shutter or ISO, which I really love to have on my camera. I love to have the shutter on the back command dial, ISO on the front, and then the aperture ring for moving my aperture. Thanks Fuji for doing that. I'm very thankful that Fuji decided to put in a CF Express Type B card slot as well as the SD card slot. Uh, the CF Express Type B card is so fast, enables us to get the maximum benefit from 8K video or 40 frames per second and uh, giving us a good buffer in terms of how many frames it can store and write and how quick it can actually write into the card. Uh, well done for that. It's great now there's no 30 minute recording limit as well. So let's talk a bit about the 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Uh, this has been a superb tool for me. Um, I've managed to be in scenarios that I've never been in before because of the reach of this camera lens. Uh, 600 millimeter at the long end, as I say, the equivalent of a full frame would be just over 900 millimeters, uh, which is pretty astonishing. It enables you to be a good working distance away from your subject, especially small birds, be able to quickly grab a few nice images um, while I'm actually out for a nature walk. Um, it's really well made. It feels uh, fairly sturdy and it's also quite light as well, which is great. It feels very balanced with the X-H2 and the X-H2S. Um, it also has a great foot. A lens foot here which has um, an Arca Swiss design so you can put it straight onto your tripod without a plate which is really good and it slots in very quickly which is great if you're on top of a tripod working from a hide for example and you quickly see something that you want to quickly turn around you can take it off very quickly push the button there it is so the lens has a focus limiter switch if you're working say five meters and beyond it'll allow the camera to focus a little bit quicker um, there is a button there for auto aperture or manual aperture and you've got three options on the third button uh, autofocus lock 
preset and autofocus, which enables these custom function buttons here uh, to be used for either of those purposes. And the set button is there to set the preset focus. I tend to use the preset quite a lot, especially when I'm working from a hide. Uh, for example, a Kingfisher um, perch, I'd preset focus to the, to the perch. So if I, was, if I saw something else in the background, I could have a go at photography it, and then I could quickly press the preset button and get back to my preset focus uh, where the perch is set. Really handy for working from a hide. It's great you have little eyelet uh, mounts here so you can put your camera strap to the mount. I use the uh, Peak Design toggles just to go around here. So all the, the weight of the camera uh, lens is taken uh, on the lens rather than on the body. So there's no pressure on the camera mount. So this lens is a f22 to f8 uh, lens, variable uh, aperture. Um, obviously using it at the 600 millimeter end, it's gonna be an f8, uh, which for some situations might be challenging in low light, but I found it superb actually for small birds and for mammals as well. Um, because you're getting an extra reach, you'll be getting that much closer to the animal. Um, so you can actually push the ISO a bit more because you're not gonna crop as much in the post. Um, but yes, it can become challenging if you're photographing, for example, in dawn and dusk, like um, if you need a high shutter speed for owls in flight or birds in flight at dawn or dusk, then it can become a little bit challenging. Although I have done this uh, for barn owls, some of the pictures you saw at sunset, the barn owls were taken on this lens, but some of the other um, owl shots I took on my uh, 200 millimeter F2 with the 1.4 teleconverter, um, stopping down to about 3.6, which is much more um, usable in low light situations. So the image stabilizer on this lens is superb. It works really well with the stabilized sensor in the camera bodies. Um, I've been using it at lower shutter speeds when the subject is still. And for video also, obviously, um, it's great to have a good stabilization in the lens and the camera body. Um, just obviously working at the long end of this uh, focal length, you really have to kind of stabilize yourself properly. Uh, often I'll crouch down and use my leg to stabilize me, myself to get some good steady video clips. But sometimes you might see a bit of a wobble, uh, but it's just a matter of improving your technique, if at all possible, depending on the scenario. The close focusing on this lens has been pretty good to be able to capture some nice butterfly shots. It's not a macro lens, but certainly for a lot of um, good sized butterflies and insects, you can get some lovely pictures and great video as well. I've been really impressed with the sharpness and detail that this zoom lens can capture, uh, even f8. As you can see in my pictures, there's lots of detail in the feathers of birds and in the fur of animals, and it's more than good enough. The good thing about this lens also is it's an internally zooming lens. So as you zoom in and out, the end doesn't go in and out externally. It's all internal, which means it's probably got better weather sealing, less exposed moving parts. Um, talking of moisture or rain, I've used this cameras, um, both the X-H2 and X-H2S and this lens in quite heavy rain and everything's been okay so far. The body seems quite good, it's quite solid. Um, it's not a tank, but it is uh, solidly built. Choosing an APS-C size sensor for wildlife has some great benefits. Uh, one of them is that the, the lens size and design can be smaller because it's a smaller sensor, which means you're carrying less weight. And that's important to me. The other thing is what's called the crop factor. So you have a, on Fuji, a 1.5 crop factor, which I said before, means a 600 millimeter becomes like a 900 millimeter. So you've got the extra reach if I was to have one uh, lens for wildlife photography, it'd actually be in between these two. It would be a 400mm f4 with a built-in 1.4 teleconverter. Uh, that would be an incredible lens to have for wildlife photography. It'd have the reach, it would have the ability in lower light and great sharpness obviously being a prime lens as well. So Fuji, over to you. So I'm just going to show you a really good way of carrying uh, cameras with the long lenses uh, that aren't too heavy. This is the way I carry it. I strap it to my camera rucksack basically by threading a Peak Design strap. This is the Peak Design light. This is a Think Tank backlight 18 litre. It has some straps here. I can just put the camera strap through. So I put the, um, the straps at nearly their shortest length. It enables me just to click on the, the toggles and carry the camera like this. I've taken the foot off the lens so it's more comfortable. I really like this way of carrying uh, long lenses. It means I can access the camera really quickly and just focus up and let go of it when I need to. Obviously this is a light lens, so it's quite easy to carry like this, but it spreads the weight along the straps of the rucksack, which really helps. So even the 200 millimeter, it's a heavier weight lens, about 2.2 kilograms. For me, is no problem carrying in this method. 
sits nicely. Definitely better without the battery grip on the bottom. Sits on the on the body better. Uh, easily carried, and it spreads that weight over the shoulders. So in conclusion, uh, this camera and this lens have been a superb tool for me for the last four seasons for wildlife photography. It's been a super light kit for its technology and for its reach. And for any wildlife photographer who loves to walk around a lot and just to explore and not carry too much weight, but wants high performance, I think this is a great choice. Thank you for watching my nature film and uh, for watching this review. I hope you all experience some wonderful times out in nature and uh, look after yourselves. God bless you all.